Welcome to Friend of a Friend from Creative Pinellas, a new conversation series drawing connections between artists, inspirations, friends, and mentors, and showcasing the individuals that together make a creative community. This program is brought to you by Creative Pinellas. Our mission is to facilitate a vibrant, integrative, collaborative, and sustainable Pinellas County arts community and arts and cultural destination. Creative Pinellas is funded in part by the Pinellas County Board of County Commissioners, Visit St. Pete Clearwater, and the State of Florida Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs. Tonight's conversation features visual artist Akiko Kotani and Creative Pinellas Manager of Curatorial Programs, Content, and Engagement, Danny Olda. All right. We'd like to welcome everyone again to this first uh, installment of Friend of a Friend. Before we begin, it'd be appropriate to uh, introduce the CEO of Creative Pinellas, Barbara St. Clair. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming to our first version of Friend of a Friend. We are so excited about this idea, which um, introduces some artists from our community. And then as we move forward with this once a month, the artist who you see today will be interviewing a friend artist um, and et cetera, et cetera. So we're really excited about this program. Um, today, you are going to enjoy meeting Akiko Kotani. Um, is an artist who lives in Gulfport. She was our artist laureate last year, the Creative Pinellas Artist Laureate. And um, she will be interviewed by Danny Olda, who is in charge of Creative Pinellas curatorial activities. Also a very excellent interviewer. Um, I know you're gonna enjoy this evening tremendously. And uh, so without uh, wait, making you wait another minute, Danny and Akiko, um, please begin and enjoy this wonderful conversation. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, like Barbara mentioned, uh, this uh, conversation really has a unique format that I'm really excited about. Uh, so this format, it, it's intended to highlight the sense of community that is at heart in the arts here in, in Pinellas County. Uh, so basically the way this is going to work is that this episode's guest will speak with the guest of their choosing. It's a Pinellas County artist, performer, creative, uh, you know, that is a friend and inspiration, somebody that, that they admire. Uh, for example, for this episode, I'll be speaking with artist and friend Akiko Fatani. Uh, for the next episode, Akiko will be speaking with uh, a friend of, of her choice. And then following that episode, that friend will then be interviewing and speaking with uh, an artist of their uh, selection and so on as we make our way through the Pinellas County creative community. So really excited about this conversation and really about the series as a whole. It's, it's, it's really going to be a lot of fun. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be speaking with Akiko Kotani uh, tonight uh, to briefly relate her bio. Uh, Akiko was born in Waipahu, Hawaii. She received her BFA in painting from the University of Hawaii and her MFA in textiles from the Tyler School of Art, Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, and now residing in Gulfport. She spent her former years as a professor emerita of art at Slippery Rock University, Pennsylvania and two years at Koch University, Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, her, her work is in the permanent collection of several private and public museums, including the Cleveland Museum of Art in Ohio and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Her work is currently represented by the Leslie Kern Gallery here in St. Pete, Florida. Uh, so Akiko, uh, you were the first creative knowledge artist laureate uh, last year. Uh, so prior to that, I, I was familiar with your work uh, especially with soft walls, because I, I saw that at the uh, first Skyway exhibition at the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg, but I didn't, I didn't know you. We hadn't met at that point, but since then, uh, we worked, uh, when you were in our story, we worked quite a bit together. We got to know each other. It was, it was really a lot of fun working with you over the course of those uh, several months. So I'm, I'm excited, and it feels appropriate that, that we start this uh, series off with you, so I think it's going to be fun. Great. So we'll, we'll get started right away. I, I wanted to ask um, basically how you've been doing, you know, during COVID-19 with social distancing. Um, so it's sort of a non-art question. What what have you been doing for fun since you've been at home, uh, you know, social distancing? What visual art, non-visual art interests uh, have kept you busy? Well, thank you very much, Danny. And I'm, I'm so happy that you called me a friend. 
I know that <laughs> we, work, <laughs> we work professionally together, you as a curator, and you even help install my show. So I, I know how you work. <laughs> uh, you know, I, you, you even had your father help install. Oh, that's right. Oh, so I can, you know, honestly say that uh, I've gotten to know you very well. And I want to thank you very much for inviting me to this very, very interesting project that you have going, uh, speaking, you know, to one another in a conversational way. And um, you've asked the question, what I've been doing um, since COVID, of course, uh, I'm indoors. Um, I have uh, brought my uh, work from my studio to one bedroom uh, of my condo. And what I've been doing is to bring parts of it uh, home so I can uh, work on parts of it and I will take the parts back to my studio to assemble it. And that is how, what I've been doing as far as my artwork goes. Um, as far as um, a non-art uh, projects, um, I, I and my husband have uh, gotten to um, uh, be more interested in cooking. So we spend, we spend quite a number of um, a time uh, planning our menus and looking at um, uh, recipes and uh, our rare uh, you know, excursions out to buy uh, our goods, um, it become a very big event when we go out to to, yeah. to the grocery store <laughs> because that is really <laughs> about the only thing that that we are doing, yeah. and as a result of that, because um, you know we we are concentrating on that. Uh, event, we have yeah. started to actually cook together in the kitchen. And um, at first, we sort of got in each other's way because it's it's a new it's a new kitchen for me. Not only that, normally uh, my husband Bernie does the cooking. So uh, with me in the kitchen, he he gets sometimes very annoyed at at you know, because I'm in his space, so to speak. But we've gotten, we've gotten along and have had some disasters, I must say, of, of <laughs> dinners. But, uh, you know, uh, I would say more uh, successful ones. So that seems to be the focus, really. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Being, being indoors. I, yeah, I, I know that's like when the the grocery store visit becomes the highlight of the week. Um, it's funny, my dad also uh, has started cooking a lot more. He's been oh. dropping food off. <laughs> but, uh, have you found yourself uh, trying to innovate in the kitchen or? or oh, wait, no, uh, no innovation. Um, we've been, you know, using recipes and being very diligent about following recipes. But I must say, uh, when I don't have a few ingredients, I can be very creative about, uh, and and usually sometimes it's a disaster. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> yeah. But I I do want to say something about what I miss if I if I could. Um, yeah. I what I miss about being shut in is going to openings and seeing people. Uh, seeing fellow artists, um, you know, and it isn't necessarily um, that I have long drawn out conversations with them, but it's really lovely to go to an opening to see artwork, to see people, see people enjoying themselves and talking to one another. That whole occasion, I didn't realize how much I would miss, and I do miss that 
I would say I miss that the most. That's yeah. interesting. I I felt the same way. Um, and, and especially because I'm an introverted person, so I usually don't enjoy um, those types of events. But it's funny how we think of them sometimes as just being parties. But now that we don't have them, it's it's interesting how important of a component of of art it is getting getting together to look look at it together and talk about it. Yes, and that's what I wanted to ask you about. If you know you you're right in the middle of it. You're you're a curator, and you see and you attend a, you know a lot of openings and um what how do you feel about that that's a very good question um it's a little bit conflicted i'm i'm on the spectrum of how much somebody worries about coronavirus i'm on the uh the, the more frightened side <laughs> I'm, I'm very very careful um and so i'm 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 happy to be in my house and and, and out of uh you know, out, not out in the public. On the other hand, the open reception is, is really very important. Uh, the gallery being open in general is very important. Um, but the open reception I found is unique because it's when people not only get to see the work, but they get to speak with each other about it. Um, you know, they, they sort of build their own narrative about it and, and that hasn't been happening. Um, so it feels like people have really been interacting with artwork in a fundamentally different way over the course of of uh, social distancing. I don't know necessarily that it's bad just yet, but it is different and I and I enjoy, I, I mean, I miss, I miss the way that we used to enjoy it. It's, um, if this goes on much longer, we, we need to find a different way. You know, here at Creative Canals, we, we have tried, uh, try and find ways to virtually replicate the open reception, but, um, but you know, it's a work in progress because it's, it's really an important part. It's, it's not just a party. I was I was I was very stunned at the way you um, put together that virtual, um, you know, uh, uh, exhibition, and I have to tell you that one of the items that was in the uh, in 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 within was the chair, because the chair that was against the wall, it helped to scale the work because there weren't any people there. Um, and so I don't know if that was intentional that you had, you know, the chair there, but it, I, I noticed that and I, I was so happy to see the chair. I can't hear Mission. you. Oh, can you, can you hear me okay? okay. So there's, there are several cues throughout the exhibition to give you a sense of scale, which is important. And that's important to your work too. Um, yes. A lot of your work is very large in scale. I, I imagine it would be very hard to um, to replicate your work effectively in, the, in a virtual setting, or a lot of it at least. Have, have you, um, so I imagine that you, you must really miss um, exhibiting in person. Yes, I do. Although we, uh, I do have a work up right now at the Tampa International Airport, and it is up for travelers. Uh, they are not encouraging, you know, the public to come to view the work. It's part of their gallery. They have a very lovely gallery at the International Airport in Tampa. And uh, so if anyone is traveling and going through the airport, they should try to stop and see the work. There are seven artists, and I would say it's a very beautiful, very strong show. Yes, I, I've heard a lot about it. Really looking forward to it. Uh, if, if I could see it uh, in person someday. But I know uh, your work will also be in the upcoming Arts Annual at, at okay. the Gallery of Creative Canals, which I should mention is is open right now. There's you know a limited number of uh, people that can be in the gallery at any one time, and um, of course, masks are required, um, but but you know you can still see some work in, in real life. So it's it, you, we've been working with it, I guess. Yes, I have. So it, it, thinking about all of these restrictions that we've been under now, it's sort of trying to think the opposite way. Something I I really wanted to ask you is if if nothing were impossible, uh, do you have a dream project or a dream collaborator? collaborator that you'd work with? Yes, um, we, 
wonderful if you would collaborate with me. <laughs> I'll be my be my mentor and my uh, you know help helpmate of all the questions I have. I do have a project that I I, I even have a working let's say working name for it because when I have I have these ideas in my what I call my image field. Um, I have working titles because they do change over time. Mm -hmm. Now this particular uh, project I have had since the 80s. It was even even longer in gestation than soft walls. And soft walls I've been thinking about really for a very long time before it was realized. And the project is called I have two titles now. One, it's called Breath, and the other, it's called Breathe. Now, Breathe is the latest iteration for my title. And believe it or not, it really is about lungs that are breathing. I thought about this project in the 80s, and it absolutely the pairs of the back of my head stand up straight now when I think about it because I can see it. It'd be beautiful in, in your gallery because I see it large. I see it coming off the ceilings or, or really where the ceiling and I think of it as the ceiling and the um, uh, walls meet for some reason. Uh, very large forms. I also see it as um, um, someone performing a dance. And I have a feeling I do know who I want, you know, to have it, some dancing in and all of that. So I have all of these, the, all I, I have all of these images in my image field now. And as I realize it, as I bring it to realization, in other words, every step, um, you know, builds to the final work. Right now, it's very vague in my head, although it's a, it's really a very strong intuitive project. And um, this is how soft walls was for me. I, the, the resulting, uh, work was really not at all how I started. I started with just ideas and, you know, maybe vague images and it could be this, it could be that, and this and that. And as I work, when I start working and I have, um, like for instance, this project for breath, I will need an engineer because it just, is very, it is going to require machinery that I have no idea how to work. But I'm sure if I talk to an engineer, they can help me realize what I want. And then there's construction and then there's, you know, um, uh, people to make the forms for me. I even have patterns that someone designed for me in my cat form. And so I do have parts of it, you know, uh, for me. And of course, a big part is I do need funding. So then I have to go, I have to start writing and finding, doing grants to find uh, funding for the project. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not just one thing. And it is something that I live with. And I guess you can say I'm very patient, although I'm not that patient. Um, I don't think I am, but it takes a long time for my projects to give birth. But, you know, I'm, I think I have a good 10, 15 years to go. And I think that's enough, but I think it's becoming urgent now that I start <laughs> working on this project. <laughs> I, much uh, hopefully much much more than that but it, it's interesting to think that you have a lot of uh projects uh possibly in the wings that 
you know, waiting for the right time. Yes, I do. I mean, more, more immediate. Yes, I do. Um, and uh, they, they are related to color now instead of white plastic, white crochet plastic. Hmm. Um, I have a project that I will present at um, for Skyway 2 at CAM, uh, the Contemporary Art Museum, and it is called Red Falls. So it is red crocheted plastic. And I do have another project um, that I really, really want to do. And it involves black crocheted plastic. Mm -hmm. I just have to find the right venue, the right place, the right circumstance so I can realize that particular image. So yes, there's quite a number of things in the wings. Yeah. So you know, quite a bit of your 3D work. Um, I really associate it with space and maybe especially because the, the two pieces that um, I got to work with exhibiting, they really dominated the Creative Pinellas Gallery, which in itself is a, is a huge gallery space. Um, how, I, I guess, how, how much does uh, the idea of space play into the piece you're creating while you're making it? Or, or is it the other way around? Do you create the, the piece and then look for, look for the space that will suit it? Wow. Um, you, you know, when I did my graduate work at Tyler School of Art, the theme throughout my uh, studies there and my production was about space. And a dominant idea for me was uh, activating space. Now, I just wanted my um, pieces, and I was doing weaving at the time, my woven panels to activate the space they occupy. This, this is the kind of um, narrative that I had in my head, that that is really the, it was a predominant idea for me in my studies for tapestry. Uh, I must say, um, my primary uh, uh, professor understood what I was doing, but there were many professors in the craft uh, department that scratched their heads and they didn't know what I was talking about. And they thought my work didn't have enough stuff. I don't know what they meant, but it was not, there wasn't enough on the surface, I guess. And my response was, um, it's absolutely, that's the only way I see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do anything else but that. So when you bring up the idea of space, it has been very important in my work and I really am very interested in having my works be something like punctuations in space, if you can think about it in that way, and that it really should activate the space around it and to resonate beyond, the work should resonate beyond, um, uh, beyond what it is. So now I have a question I wanna ask you. Sure. Um, how in the world do you, um, how, how in the world do you um, work with such an enormous space that, you know, in your, uh, it's, a, it's really a museum in your galleries. Yeah. It's enormous. That's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a challenge. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, prior to working with Craig Moss, I, I worked as an independent curator and I, I curated some, several shows, but they're all in smaller galleries comparatively. Um, so the main gallery space at Creative Canals is, is really large. Of course, the ceilings are, are high. They're, uh, they're like 16 to, to 20 feet high. Um, so um, it not only is it tall, but it, it's, very, it's very long. Um, 
So it is it is hard. It, it feels every exhibition almost feels a bit like a puzzle to to ensure that there's uh, enough uh, work to fill it, but but not crowded. Um, you know, to to understand the way people walk through the space. Um, and it, and there are some challenges that you know I never dealt with before working in that space. Um, for example, for the space to not overwhelm smaller pieces, to position, position them such that um, they, they don't get lost in such a, a large gallery. Uh, the, the rest of the, the gallery space is very nice. We have, you know, of course, three smaller galleries and four more even smaller galleries. Uh, so it, it allows a bit of flexibility. Um, but, but it has been a challenge sometimes. Other times it, it's freed us up, like, like showing your work. Um, or during some of the art annuals, we, we had some very large pieces like um, an installation by Kenny Jensen. We've had some uh, large uh, 2D work from uh, uh, Make It Stackhouse. Um, so it's been fun yes. to, to have the freedom to really um, to, to feature some really large work, which has been a lot of fun too. Yeah, so I've, I've really enjoyed it. it it's, been, uh, um, it's just been a lot of fun to be able to do that. Yeah, so I look forward to, to doing more. We've, we've got a few shows uh, in the works. For example, our Emerging Artists exhibition is coming up, and it seems like it'll fit just perfectly in the, in the large space, not being too crowded and not, not too being uh, too sparse. But yeah, I will get there. I, you know, I had a, a question for you. I, I read in your bio. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yes, go ahead. Um, we're having a, a difficulty with, it could be my connection, I don't know, but go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm a, it's a little bit loud here because I've got a thunderstorm outside. <laughs> it's great timing. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, before we began the video here, I asked you how to pronounce the university you work at, Coach University in Turkey. So, you know, you've lived and worked uh, around the world uh, but now you seem perfectly at home in Gulfport here in Florida. Um, I, I want to ask what, what it's been like, I guess, uh, you know, working and living around the world. But what is it about here in Pinellas County and Gulfport that, that you enjoy? Uh, I, you know, I must say that when I first moved to the area, I did not know any artist here. And Moving here, one of the things I noticed about artists and also people in general, uh, especially artists, um, and they're not they're not afraid to um, you know be nice, and they're not afraid to be um, you know to welcome you and to help you get started and to help. Um, introduce you to people. And the reason I say um, they're not afraid is because when you go into a new um, situation, into a new community, uh, it's interesting you spoke of Koch and of Istanbul. When I first went to Istanbul, I, I was, it was a totally different atmosphere. Obviously, it was a different culture, but here, everyone is really lovely. They're not afraid to help. They're not afraid to, um, you know, be nice, and um, they're not protecting themselves. And I, I have no idea if it's the weather. All I know is, um, you know, Danny, my work ha also has been really accepted widely here. And that really helps me <laughs> be friendly also to people that are so nice to me. So does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. And it, it's funny how it, it feels uh, like you really fit in, in Gulfport. Um, I, yeah, I, I came down, yeah. Uh, it must have been a few months ago. We we had coffee in a cafe down there, and it was, it, it it felt yes. it just felt right. So, um, so you've lived in, in many different places. Have you found that your work has changed depending on where you are living and working at any one time? Yes, 
In fact, I did uh, speak of uh, living in um, uh, Istanbul and teaching at Koch University. Um, when I first got there, it was such a different uh, culture and a different situation. Um, I, I just, I, I couldn't work. I really had, a, you know, a block. I, I just could not, I couldn't find art supplies. Um, I couldn't, you know, well, obviously the language barrier was a, a difficulty, but I did know some artists that really tried to help me. Um, and it, I, I, it was just a very difficult time for my artwork and it, did not, my artwork stopped and it frightened me because I thought, oh, this is, my career is over. <laughs> it's the worst, it's the worst feeling for an artist to feel this way. And yes, so I did. Now, to say that that was a bad experience is not so because when I came back to Western Pennsylvania, where my studio was, um, I started to work and the flood of images from Istanbul, I just, just came torridly. I mean, I couldn't stop it. So it was almost as if it was damned. It was there, but I just, couldn't access it. Now I'm not a I'm not an expert in you know these matters, um, but all I can say is what I experienced, and so there's a tremendous amount of work that I did. Um, the Bosphorus series, for instance, the stitched um, bamboo threads on paper. That's all about um, living in Istanbul and my memories there, uh, wonderful, wonderful times that I had um, there. So, it, you know, it's odd. I mean, we our artists are very, you know, we can't predict what's going to happen. Yeah. So, you, you know, you talked a bit about there being a block and eventually it releasing. Um, have you found any any tricks or strategies that help you get past a, a creative block? Um, you know, uh, I remember, I remember, I think I'm going to butcher this saying, uh, but I recall Woody Allen saying 90% um, or 80 or 90% of uh, work is getting there. In other words, Put yourself in your studio. It may be that, you know, I don't feel like going to the studio. I feel lazy. I just, you know, it just, I, I just don't want to be there. It's too hot. It's too this, it's too that. But simply going to the studio and being in the studio and just sort of puttering around, even if I don't want to work, that really helps. Also, I do have strategies such as sketching. I find that sketching really helps to loosen, um, uh, you know, images, even doodling. Sometimes I'll just take a pencil and just doodle and it will develop into pictures and into ideas. And so, yes, I do have, um, you know, uh, things that I sort of trick myself into, into, you know, getting back into my, but I do know what it means to have a, a block. It, it is a creative block. It is very frightening. And I'm sure, I'm sure that all artists have had this. Yeah, it, it does feel that way. Um, and I, and I, I think for people who haven't experienced maybe because they, Perhaps they don't make art regularly if they're not artists. Um, don't realize how um, how painful it can be. It's painful. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
And also that, that brings to mind about um, artists that, that deal with depression, how sometimes it can be romanticized in an artist, but really, uh, I think for a lot of artists, it, it prevents them from, from working. And, and in that sense, it's, it, it just makes things even worse. It is. Um, it, it really is. I mean, you know, the, 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 uh, an artist is a human being and the human person is, you know, as we both know, <laughs> very complex. So it isn't just one thing. It's, um, you know, how you feel, how you think. Um, and also now we know that it's different chemicals that are in our bodies, in our mind, and how they all interact one with the other. It's all, um, you know, all one system going on inside of you. And then it's also uh, your environment, the things that impact upon, you know, upon the person. So all of these things are, uh, you know, makes, makes the human, and also I must say this, the, the artist, you know, a very complex person, but isn't it wonderful that an artist can express these difficulties? Um, I think it's just, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have an avenue, uh, you know, like a safety valve, you know, that we can, um, you know, have it come out. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. I, when I did used to make art, I, I felt like, um, not only the expression, but the process itself, I found really relaxing. In fact, I, I have a feeling that's the only reason I made art is, is just for the process of it. Do you, your work seems a lot like that too, very meditative in its process. Do you, do you find it um, soothing? Yes, um, I find my work uh, soothing at times, I would say most of the time. There are times when that's the last thing I want to do it's very frustrating. Um, and those are the times that, you know, I just simply have to push through and get over. In other words, it really is to me, um, because of the nature of the type of work I do, it's so repetitive. And it is frankly very boring to do a project for months and months and sometimes years on end um, to sustain a certain kind of energy level to put into the work. Um, but um, I also find that it's similar to swimming. Uh, when you swim and when you start swimming, it's the last place you wanna be. You wanna jump out of the pool. You don't wanna be there, it's cold. But then you hit a level, you know, they call it the second wind and you hit a level and you really feel fantastic. You feel great. And that is how it feels working in the studio. And I must say that this is not part of your question, but um, when an artist is in that state of being, you know, like a second wind, um, it feels really great it almost feels like some kind of a high. And you really have a sense that you can realize the ultimate image that's in your, you know, in your brain or in yourself. And um, it really is seductive. This is why artists keep working because you have moments like that that seduce you into thinking that you can achieve uh, the ultimate image that you have in your, you know, in your mind. That's why we keep working. People always say, how can you keep working like that? Artists are crazy. It's really because it feels great when you are in that state and you really feel then you can reach that ultimate image. Yeah, and just keep chasing that. I, I imagine that there's uh, some artists, I, you know, I think I've mentioned the same before on the Creative Health live stream, that uh, I heard somebody talking about running before, that they said they, uh, they don't like running, but they enjoy 
having had run. Um, I imagine there's <laughs> artists like that too. Exactly. So. Exactly. Art is that way as well, you know. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. curious, I'm curious to know about, did you study art? I mean, you are a curator and you know so much about design and you know so much about putting, you know, uh, things in space and, and really your shows are very, very well done. The space. Thank you. Fact, no, in fact, it's so well done that you don't even think about the complexity of, you know, the placement and all of that. It's almost like- a, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> almost like a really, you know, a, a, ch a chess game. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate that and I, and I really enjoy doing it. I, I did um, originally study um, visual art to be, be, to be a visual artist. Um, and so when I had, I, I studied out in California, when I moved back um, to Florida, um, you know, I, I came back as a, as a visual artist, uh, mostly working in painting and, and installation every once in a while. Um, I, I just, I happened to, I saw uh, an exhibition uh, that I, I wanted to, I wanted to read more about it and I didn't see any articles about it. So I wrote a blog post about it, which um, eventually led to a regular blog. And that led to um, actually getting paid to write about <laughs> art, um, which turned into a living. Um, and, and eventually I, I was invited to do some, some curating here and there, which I really enjoyed too. I, and so I, I feel like I eventually got to the place where um, I made peace, I think, with the fact that um, making art is not really what I was, um, it's not what I'm good at. Um, I enjoy doing it, but it's, it's not what I'm good at professionally. Um, I enjoy enjoying other people's artwork. I, I love spending time with other people's work and thinking about it and getting lost in it. Um, and as a curator, it's, it, it feels ideal because I, I get to enjoy other people's work and there is a measure of creativity too. Um, so that's, I, that's why I really enjoy it. I love being by myself in the gallery, whether it's to write about an exhibition or to uh, put together an exhibition and imagine how somebody else will experience it. Yeah, um, yeah so I initially trained as a visual artist. I, I really didn't train as, as a curator, it just sort of, um, it came over time. And you know, I, I think a lot of people's stories are that way. It's um, finding out what you really should be doing is, is a very, um, sort of a very convoluted path sometimes. <laughs> It's not a straight line. <laughs> yeah, no, never. And uh, and you know, writing was something I always enjoyed doing. I remember, um, I remember the first time I really realized how much I enjoyed it. So I felt like it, it would, I'd end up having to end up there someday. So, right. yeah, yeah. So speaking of uh, occupations, you know, something before we wrap up, I really want to ask also is that you know you mentioned your your husband earlier mm -hmm. is um. He's a philosopher, so I can only imagine what you know the conversation between you as a as a accomplished professional artist and and a philosopher may have. Does do those conversations or the products of them uh, wind up in your work? Yes, I think we share we share uh, you know what we speak about together in his work and what I hear him speaking and when I read his writing uh, to the extent that I can. Um, I would just say that the way that we are similar and the reason why we have so much to talk about is that we both start with uh, abstractions. In other words, he starts with an abstract uh, uh, concept and that's how he interprets the world with you know, abstract concepts. And I interpret my world or the world around me through abstract images. And so we start there, but we both end up with tangible products in this world. In other words, his tangible product is books. And he is now, in fact, he is now, um, writing his 10th book and it's going to be Cambridge Press that he's working with. I'm so proud of him. And wow, good for him. Yes. And um, I, uh, you know, my, my uh, 
tangible products obviously is what has been shown in your gallery and their artworks. So you see, we have a similar type of process, although we come to the world and, and our process in a very different way. And so we do have quite a bit to talk about and to really teach each other and to learn you know, about each other's work. So yes, we do have, um, in fact, sometimes we start the day by talking about what we're going to do today. And then we end up, uh, you know, an hour later and say, gee, we really talk a lot, don't we? <laughs> and, and then you meet halfway in the kitchen and collaborate. <laughs> and eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and eat, eat the tangible products you come up with there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 always been fun being able to to chat with you too um and, and it's always a lot of fun of course working with you too um i'm looking forward to uh some future projects is there any future projects um you have underway that you might be able to tell us about oh uh, well i did discuss some of the things you know some of the mm -hmm. things i have in some of the works that um uh, that I have produced and that I'm going to do. But uh, other than that, um, no. And I will be speaking to you about the annual. <laughs> yeah. I haven't, yeah. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> we take that offline. <laughs> yes, I haven't forgotten. And we will, you know, I'll have to uh, meet with you uh, and w we can discuss, you know, what, what I will show. Yeah, well, that's exciting. That's exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And the Arts Annual will be a lot of fun. Um, just to let people know, to pencil it into your calendar, it'll be in November, I believe. Um, we have a few dates. We'll share more details soon because it's, it's going to be a bit different this year, but uh, just as exciting if not more so. And it'll feature Akiko. So oh, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, Akiko, I wanted to ask you uh, one, one final question. So, we talked about at the beginning of this that this is the first in a series of videos where uh, each month uh, one guest will be hosting the next one and inviting their own guests. I wanted to ask you um, who you plan on having as your guest for next month. Yes, um, it's Babs Reingold. I talk to her occasionally. Uh, and on the telephone, very long conversations with her about everything, about art, about our career, um, uh, you know, everything about how frustrating it is to be indoors and so on and so forth, and our different mm -hmm. strategies. Um, so I am really looking forward to uh, speaking with her and having a conversation with her because there really is quite a number of things about her work that are still mysteries to me. And perhaps I can, um, you know, find out more about it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Babs is always a lot of fun to speak with. Very interesting. And I, I'd love to see uh, you two together, especially. I think, I think it'll be great. It'll, so that'll be, uh, just gonna mention that's gonna be next month. Uh, next month uh, to come on, come on back and, and you'll be able to catch uh, Kiko and, and Babs, uh, Ryan Bull speaking with each other, uh, continue the conversation. And then the month after that, uh, which will be September, uh, Babs will continue the conversation with her own guests. Um, and it'll be cool to sort of see it uh, wind its way through the, great, uh, you know, the Charles County creative community. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Well, I wanted to thank you, uh, Akiko, for um, for joining me with this conversation. Is is there anything before we uh, we wrap up that you want to share with anybody that might be watching? Well, that you know, my work is now at the gallery uh, at the airport, and of course, my work will appear with you at the annual. Um, it will also be appearing at the Baker Museum in Naples, Florida, in a show called uh, Florida, 
Florida Contemporary, and I believe they will be featuring four artists from Florida. So I was very, you know, happy to be involved with that show. Yeah, well, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that still exhibiting, even though uh, we've been mostly indoors and on our own. Um, yes, of, very course, of course, everything depends on, you know, Mr. COVID or Miss COVID and, you know, yeah. how, things, how things are scheduled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just we'll keep keep on going. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for uh, for joining me, Kiko, and uh, you and Bernie continue to, to stay safe and, and continue making work, and I'm looking forward to working with you again soon. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. So before we wrap up, I uh, just want to share a few things that we've got coming up here at Creative Canals, a few more live streaming events uh, that we encourage everyone to, um, to join us for. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the next one is coming up next Thursday, Thursday, July 23rd at noon. It'll be here at facebook.com slash creative It's a coffee with the curator featuring Mary Child. Uh, she's artistic director of Duncan McClellan, uh, McClellan Gallery and Richard Logan, the artist and collector. Right now, we have Glass in the Gallery open, uh, both as a virtual exhibition on the Creative Canals website at creativecanals.org and as a real physical exhibition at the Gallery at Creative Canals that's open Wednesday through Sunday, noon to five. Um, but definitely catch us at Thursday, July 23rd at noon. We're gonna be speaking with that artist, uh, Richard Logan and uh, Mary, uh, who curated that exhibition. Uh, Tuesday, July 28th at 7 p.m., we have our second Artist Laureate Conversation. We uh, premiered that last month and now it's the second one. The topic will be foundations and our current artist laureates, um, Carol Mickett and Robert Stackhouse will be speaking with Dee O'Brien. She is a Shakespeare instructor and director and Charlotte Johnson, uh, a talented choreographer and dancer. And then finally, Thursday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Uh, we have the next episode of Beauty and the Berg Live and the featured topic for that, uh, for that night will be Pinellas County Arts Education. Uh, just in time for the new school year coming up. So it'll be uh, another great episode for sure of it. So I encourage you to join us again. All these you can find at creativepanelis.org, uh, at facebook.com slash Uh But please uh, join us again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, next month for the next Friend of a Friend of Kiko. So uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and wrap up and, and see everybody next time.